Madame Chen. Madame, on behalf of the management and staff, Madame Chen, I have the honor to welcome you to Paris. I hope that your stay will be very happy. You are most kind. I'm sure all these security arrangements may have caused your guests some inconvenience. I do apologize. Not at all, madame. And now perhaps you will permit me to show you to your suite. Well, that was uh, quite a large entrance for a small woman. You know, at one time, the female of the Eastern species was subservient. She walked four paces behind her husband carrying his luggage. But then they let her into politics. And wham! Overnight, the Oriental Blossom was transformed into a tiger. And our friend Madame Chen of East Viet Pew makes Hitler and Mussolini look like a couple of Boy Scouts. So I took that to waiting, sir. Excuse me. You haven't kept me waiting at all. I was enjoying the spectacle. I believe you have a reservation for me. My name's... Oh, I know your name. You're the famous Simon Templer. <laughs> Two men in the corridor, one at the head of the stairs and one at the elevator. Hmm. What about the windows? A boisseau is watching them from the roof. Excellent. Well, I, I don't think we've got much to worry about. <laughs> we seem to have... Uh, Templar. The saint. Second thoughts, perhaps we'd better start worrying. Inspector Kersey. Sergeant Ledoux. Nice to see you. Tell me, what's France's top two detectives doing in the Hotel de Paris? Is somebody singing the sugar? Templar, I know perfectly well why you're here. The fact that you have checked into the same hotel as Madame Chen, and the fact that the lady owns a pearl necklace worth 300,000 American dollars can hardly be called a coincidence. What a nasty, suspicious mind you have. But if you're worried, why don't you pop me into one of the deepest dungeons in the Bastille? I wish I could. However, I'll have to be satisfied with the next best thing. The Duke, you will take a room in this hotel. You will accompany Mr. Templer wherever he goes. You will stick so close to him that people will think you are Siamese twins. Understood? Yes, my dear. I may be a little oversensitive, but I have the vaguest feeling you don't trust me. Yeah, you'll excuse me. I shall retire to the bar, gentlemen. Well? Uh, yes, my dear. Good afternoon, can I help you? Yes, my name is Janine Rogers. I'm the public relations officer for Madame Chen. Could you tell me which suite she's in? Uh, the Mary Louise, sixth floor. Just show your credentials to the detectives in the corridor. To Madame Chen and her lovely pals. Oh, and don't worry, I won't tell the inspector you were drinking on duty. <coughs> but a uh, cigarette. Ah, merci. Oh, my <laughs> Come in, Monsieur. Hello, Judith. Hello. I'm afraid you're mistaking me for someone else. I never make mistakes about beautiful women. Well, I'm very flattered, but my name isn't Judith. It's Janine. Janine Rogers. Janine Rogers. I'll try and remember that. You wouldn't by any chance be connected with uh, Madame Chen. Well, yes. As a matter of fact, I'm acting as her PR while she's in Paris. Excuse me, mademoiselle. Is this gentleman annoying you? Well, not annoying so much as disappointing. I had hoped that the men in Paris would have a more original line than... The haven't I met you somewhere before? If you'll excuse me, gentlemen. I'll uh, try not to disappoint next time, Miss uh, Rogers. Well, Paris may turn out to be more interesting than I expected. Fool! Stupid, bungling fool! I did all I could. It took a great deal of influence, too. Arrange a meeting with the undersecretary. Undersecretary? I don't talk to undersecretaries. You insult our country to suggest it. If you would only take a moment to read this correspondence, you will see that I have done all in my power to accede to your wishes. I'll give you two 
days to arrange my meeting with the minister. If you fail, you will be recalled and dismissed. Perhaps you and your family will prove more efficient laboring on a state farm. You! Leave those. Mr. Kwan must be capable of doing something. Madam Chair, oh, I'm most frightfully sorry I made my good Don't bother. I've heard enough excuses for one day. Now, goodbye, Mr. Kwan. How much time have I got before my press conference? Oh, I should say about 30 minutes. Now, I have prepared a handout based on those facts. Good, I'll check it while I'm changing. Oh, better have the restaurant prepare some kind of buffet and get the bar to send up lots of drinks. It's most important that the newspapers carry favorable reports of my visit. Leave it all to me. Give me the bar, please. Cocktail bar? Yes, of course. I'll have a boy send them up to your room at once. Thank you. Uh, boy, take a drink trolley up to Madame Chen's suite and make sure you've got everything on it. Where do you think you're going? Well, no offense, but the... Uh... Scenery over there is a little more attractive than it is here. Come up with your charm and looks and my money. Who knows? Who is he? Does the name Simon Templar mean anything to you? Ah, a saint. Mm -hmm. It does not look particularly dangerous. Many people have made that same mistake. They could write books on how long they were. Let us not add any chapters. Huh? But why should he bother us? It is too much of a coincidence that he should arrive at the same hotel as Madame Shen today. I think that, like us, he finds the pearls an irresistible attraction. We must find a suitable way to, um, uh, dissuade him. I've been through your notes. They're quite satisfactory. Is there anything else you want? I don't think so. Aren't you wearing the pearls? I hadn't planned on it. It would be a pity not to. The press are bound to want to take photographs of you wearing them. Very well, if you say so. Come in. Oh, yes, that's splendid. Um, will you put it over there? I say they are splendid, aren't they? Aren't they? Our program of agrarian reform is already underway. However, like many of the newly emerging nations, we are hampered by lack of capital. I hope that answers your question. Any more questions? Three years ago, the United States government made you a grant of $50 million. Now, a Senate committee has reported that very little of that money has been spent on new development. The Senate committee was totally misinformed. Is there any truth in the report that you have a deposit account in a Swiss bank with assets of over three million dollars? I will not allow Madame Chen to answer any more questions based on sensational and completely false reports that have been made by the gutter press. It is an established fact, isn't it? That the leaders of the political parties who have opposed you have been executed without a hearing. Yeah, we want the truth. We have answer. Answer us. Please! I agreed to this press conference in all good faith. However, your attitude is so obviously hostile that I'm certain whatever you print will be unfavorable. Therefore, I see no point in continuing. Good day. Okay, that wraps it up. Off we go. <laughs> Get me a drink, will you? Oh, and one for Madame Chen. On second thoughts, leave the trolley. I think when she sees the evening paper, she'll need it. Oh, your friend Madame Chen doesn't seem to be too popular. At least her pearls photograph beautifully. A photograph is as near as you will get to them, Mr. Tempo. I shall be watching you. Bonsoir. Oh, no, 
was me sleeping in my bed. Good evening, Mr. Templar. I am Raymond Fouquet. This is Louis Perrac. To avoid hypocrisy, I won't say I'm glad to meet you. Since you didn't come for a nap, state your business and get out. If you cooperate, our business will not take long. We think that you have designs on Madame Shen's pearl. The thought's not entirely original, however, go on. We intend to have that necklace. I'm telling you this because uh, any similar plans you might have could only get in our way. Now, if you would promise to leave the field open for us, we might even give you a small cut. Otherwise, a big cut from ear to ear. You must tell me who writes your friend's dialogue. It's really rather witty. The pearls are ours. Don't get in our way. Understand? Oh, dear. You've made it all soggy. You won't be able to smoke it now. What happens if I don't cooperate? Perak, show him. I used to carry one like that. Found it frayed my cuffs. <laughs> Oh, before we went down to dinner, did I give you the schedule for tomorrow? Yes. At least I thought you did. Perhaps it's in the bedroom. Oh, well, I'll, I'll go and look. Madam Chin! Madam Chin! What is it? Somebody's been at the safe! Get the detective! What is it, Madam Chin? Somebody's been in the bedroom! Check on the exits. Take a look on the roof. Tell the Duke to check on Templar. Hurry! Well, ladies, I think perhaps we'd better have a talk. Oh. Lonely? I wasn't sure you would still be here. Well, now you are. Yes. It's very difficult to concentrate in this hotel. What is going on? An attempt has been made to steal Madame Shen's pearls. Where's my 
inspecteur. Tried to snatch Madame Jones' pearls. Yes. Come on, I'll fix your drink. You can tell me about it. You mean they were just lying here on the dressing table? It was careless, I know. But I was rather upset after the press conference. I just forgot to put them in the safe. I'll do it now. Uh, leave it for a moment. My man is just finishing. Well, I certainly hope you'll be more careful in future. And I hope you'll be more careful. I understood there was a detective guarding the door. That's something I want to look into now. Who was on guard, Ledic? Alondo. I've got him outside. Mm. Now, Dupree, if you finish it, A minute, madame. please. You found no trace of the man yet. Well, we are making a systematic search, madame. We've got every exit covered. I don't see how he could possibly have gone out of the hotel. If you don't find him, it's possible he might try again, is it not? You can rest assured, madame, that nobody else will get into your suite tonight. Will you be in for the rest of the night, madame? If you can guarantee there will be no more alarms, I shall now go to bed. You can depend on that, madame. Excellent. Good night, gentlemen. Good night, madame. madame. What are you doing? I was, um, I was just admiring them. They really are superb. But I'd feel much happier if they were in the safe. So would I. beyond endurance. Any voice that is raised in complaint is instantly silenced by force of arms. What did you hope to do with the money you got from the pearls? Start a revolution? That must wait. In the history of all oppressed people, a leader emerges from the crowd and takes his people into freedom. Until that man appears, the suffering goes on. The pearls would have brought some relief, food, medical supplies. Anyway, I failed. So now you must hand me over to the police. I owe you my life, so I'll give you no trouble. Yes, but I uh, don't think you deserve to be caught. You have a better motive than anyone else for stealing the pearls. It's just you're not a very good thief. Never, are you there? Come in. Well, the Duke, you'd better make that two champagne cocktails and go easy on the bidders. Yes, sir, and thank you very much. Well, they do. Can't you see? I know, but at least you are in the clear. You should be glad that I was watching you. Otherwise, you would be in cells by now. Oh, I'm very grateful. And after we've finished our drinks, I shall go straight to bed, so you've no need to worry. Why should I worry? I shall be watching your door all night. I'll uh, send the drink over. Give me the bar, please. With Mr. Templer's compliments. Merci. Excuse me, do you happen to know where Mr. Templer is? Look, there's a man climbing in a window. I can't see anything. Two floors down, over there. See? No, I can't see anything. He's gone. It's got to be him. No one else would be fool enough to try a climb like that. I've got to get him. He's gone.
come. Rogers still in the hotel. Janine Rogers. Uh, I'll call Madame John Sweet and find out. Thank you. Uh, doesn't matter. Exercise size of the pearls. Is there anything else you need to know? Nothing, mademoiselle, nothing. I have all the information I need here. The American magazines do such good color photographs, don't you agree? How soon can you have it ready? Well, if I work hard, a day or so. It's got to be ready by tomorrow night at the very latest. I shall try. You have the money. 14,000 new francs. 20,000, mademoiselle. But you agreed to 14,000. It was all I could do to raise that. Well, times are difficult to have an identical copy made by tomorrow night. It's hard work. However, if you prefer to go elsewhere... You know I can't. That is true. Oh, very well. I'll have the extra 6,000 tomorrow night when I collect it. Be sure it's ready. Be sure you have the money. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Au revoir. Hey, lady, you want to buy filthy pearl necklace? Simon! Ah, so now you know me. What are you doing here? I think you'll like one for it's eavesdropping. You mean you, you, you heard? Every single word. Look, Simon, this is the biggest deal I've ever set up. I've spent a fortune on it. And I could last it up. Just one little word to Madam Chen and you're out on your ear. Simon, you wouldn't, please. No, I might, unless... Unless what? You know something? I'm hungry. Well, go to a restaurant. I have a much better idea. Why don't we go back to your place? You cook me a nice little meal because I cooperate much better on a full stomach. Ah, that's beautiful cooked. And charmingly served. Well, it's rather difficult to make a mess of bacon and egg. I must prepare a meal for you one day. You mean you can cook? Can I cook? I hate to admit it, but the only time I've ever been robbed was when Mrs. Beaton stole my recipes. You haven't told me how you... Got this job as public relations officer to Madame Chen yet? Well, believe it or not, it was all perfectly genuine. After I had a little run-in with you in Rome... That little run-in, as you call it, was one of the neatest double-crosses I've ever seen. Except that you didn't fall for it. No, I was talking about the one I pulled. <sighs> anyway, you still haven't told me how you got this job as PRO. Well, believe it or not, I decided to go straight. I joined a London agency and then I was assigned to the Paris branch. For two years now, I've been strictly legit. Well... Head office told me I was going to take care of Madame Chen's visit. Well, like everyone else, I'd heard about her pearls. And the old longing came back, once a thief. Opportunity makes a thief. That was the best opportunity I'd ever had. So keep out of it, Simon, please. Well, well, well. Well, that's the third time today I've been warned off those pearls. First by the police, then by a couple of rather unsavory French hoods, and now by you. Was it they who tried the safe tonight? Oh, no. No, that was yet another interested party. 
You know, if you're not very careful, someone's going to heist those pearls before you. Thank you. Mmm. Blue Mountain. Lightly roasted, coarsely ground. Instant, two francs a tin. Mm. You can't win them all. Simon? Mm hmm? How would you feel about working for me? What uh, exactly did you have in mind? Well, I'd take my expenses and then we'd split the profit down the middle. Oh, it breaks my heart to do it, but I think the opposition is getting a little too strong. What do I have to do? To see that no one gets the pearls before I do. And how do I know that you won't cheat me? <laughs> I wouldn't do that again. No, this time I'll play it absolutely straight. All right. You have a deal. Good. You know, the advantage of a partnership like ours is that it has so many fringe benefits. Oh, why don't you tell me about them? Yes, I was discussing terms with my new employer. You'd better grab a quick shower. Shower? Why? We are going to the races. Oh, yes. Uh, Madame Shane is going to the races, too. Oh, it's not cosy. It's these little surprises that make life worthwhile. Janine? Yes, Madame Shane? I'll be ready in five minutes. Oh, very well. I'll telephone for the car. Would you get me a garage, please? Garage? Oui, at once. Madame Chen wants her car. Garage? Monsieur Templer's car. In half an hour. Oui, I will pick it myself. You, you said he could not lose. If he keeps running, he may win the next one. Let's see what Monsieur Newsboy has to say. Good afternoon, Madame Shen. My name is Paul Chavo, secretary to the Minister of Foreign Affairs. What can I do for you? The minister presents his compliments and wonders whether you could join him, perhaps, for an informal meeting at his office. Uh, his note will explain. This is most inconvenient. Could it not wait until tomorrow? Uh, unfortunately, the minister flies to London tomorrow morning. Very well. You are most gracious, madame. Well, I uh, <coughs> think I'll put a little bet on. Mr. Tableau, do you really think I am so stupid? If you wish to follow Madame Chen, just say so. You can go anywhere you want, as long as I am with you. Why don't you follow me? Nice 
Nice car. Englisher. Right, this road takes us straight to Paris. But we are not going to Paris. Oh, but that's so sad. Madame Chin and I. Madame. And now, I hope you will not find us ungallant if we stop and uh, make you walk. Well, Mr. Templar. Uh, Neil, what do you usually look for in haystacks? They are funny, Mr. Templar. In that case, you will not be needing these. Thanks for your help. Madame Chen, your pearls. Thank you, Inspector. Your pearls, Madame Chen. Thank you. To you, Mr. Templar, with my eternal thanks. You see, my pearls have such enormous sentimental value for me. These two attempts to steal them while I've been in Paris have been very disturbing. We can well imagine. You know, uh, pearls are fascinating things. 
Right through history, there have been stories and legends about them, stories of violence and hatred, and of course, love. Did you ever hear that if you dropped a pearl into a glass of wine, it would dissolve? No. Oh, yes. There's a, an historical source that says uh, Cleopatra once dropped a priceless pearl into a goblet of wine and offered it to Caesar, just to prove that money was no object. <laughs> How fascinating. Uh, isn't it? Well, if you will excuse us, Madame Chen, we must be getting back on duty. Thank you for your hospitality. Not at all. Miss Roger will see you out. No, you stay. I'm sure after all the excitement of today, you must be feeling very tired, my dear. Why don't you run along home and rest? That's most awfully sweet of you, but actually I'm perfectly all right. Nonsense. You look very tired. I insist you get some sleep. Oh, uh, very well. I'll see you in the morning. Good night, Mr. Templer. Good night, Miss Rogers. Why don't we sit down? Yes, that's a good idea. I'm sure we'll find it much more comfortable here. Isn't that better? Yes, indeed. Dear Mr. Templer, I owe you more than I can ever repay. Not at all. But I can try to thank you. Eastern women are taught from childhood the art of showing gratitude. Who is it? Well, what do you want? I am sorry to arrive unannounced, but I have news of greatest importance. Oh, well, I'll be on my way. Oh, please stay. No, Madam Chen, your, your kindness itself, but tomorrow is going to be a very busy day. Thank you for your hospitality. Thank you, I mean. Good night. Good night, Mr. Templer. Good night. Well, what do you want? Tonight I was finally able to speak to the French foreign minister. Not before time. When am I to see him? You are not. What are you saying? Only that the minister declines to see you. That is the diplomatic way of saying that the French government despises you, your husband, and your regime. This is your fault, you old fool. You're our representative here. You allow me to be insulted. You will be recalled at once. You may recall me, but I shall return to our country, not as the head of your legation, but as a private citizen. That is my letter of resignation, effective as from now. Good night, Madam Chen. Come back. I command it. Come back. I'll be leaving Paris on the noon plane. Please call the airline and confirm my reservation. Then call Miss Janine Roger and tell her I want her here at 8 o'clock sharp. Uh, Janine? Uh-huh. In bed. In my own room, I escaped. Tell me, did you get the pearls? I'm afraid not, Simon. He said he couldn't finish the replica till tomorrow night. Oh, that's not too bad. We we'll just have to wait, won't we? I'll uh, talk to you tomorrow. You get some sleep. Good night. Not in there. Those go in here. I'm sorry, madame. Why can't you do as you're told? The car will be here in a few moments, Madame Chen. Good. Don't forget this. And I have prepared a statement for the press. Perhaps you'd like to read it. Of course. Help the maid. Would you like me to pack your jewellery, Madam Chen? No, I'll deal with it. That's all right.
Well, I, uh, I can't say I'm sorry to see her go. <laughs> I wouldn't like this sort of job every week. <laughs> Still, it was worth it to stop the saint in his tracks. Mm. Suppose we uh, ask him to join us for a drink, huh? He checked out this morning, but uh, there is nothing to stop us. Mm. Uh, I'll check my key first. Mm. Uh, Mademoiselle. Merci, monsieur. Merci beaucoup. Oh, Inspector, mm. I report every move made by Templar since he arrived in Paris. Most difficult. Thank you. Jérôme? Yes. Templar went to see Jérôme in Montmartre? Of course. He followed the girl there. Inspector, is something wrong? I wonder. This man specializes in making replicas of famous jewels. Now, if Templar and the girl went to visit him... Just a minute, Jérôme. How does it happen that you have these pictures? Is it a crime, Inspector? It's my business. Why did Simon Templar come to visit you here? Are uh, you mistaken, Sergeant? I don't know anybody of this name. He came here. I followed him. And so did Jenny Roger. Ah, yeah. <laughs> was it Roger? She wanted the uh, bracelet, the bracelet repaired. Or perhaps a replica of Madame Chen's pearls. That's <laughs> ridiculous. This arrived at your office just now. It is urgent. Thank you. Oh, it's, uh, it's not important now. I was merely checking on Madame Chance. Oh, my God. Janine Roger, alias Judith Northwood, alias Jean Randolph. Yeah, look, look, there, there, there. While in London, known to be a confederate of Simon Templar, alias the Saint. She was working with him all the time, right in Madame Chance's suite. And so were you. Oh, oh monsieur, I know you. You made a replica of Madame Chen's pearl and Templar and this girl switched them. I swear, Madame Chen made no complaint. Madame Chen doesn't know. Come on. Simon! What on earth are you doing here? I'm cooking as a meal, don't you remember? I promised you. I thought we might have it as a farewell luncheon to mourn the failure of our little flat. Yes, it was a shame, but... But we didn't have another 24 hours. Still, perhaps we'll work together on some other scheme. Well, I certainly hope so. I see you're all ready to leave. Yes, yes. Well, I, I, I thought I'd take a trip to New York. <laughs> yes, well, I always did say that uh, Paris in the spring was no place for a woman. Now you sit down here while I serve. I think you're going to like this. It's my supreme culinary achievement. Two bottles of wine and one whole chicken. Plus a touch of the Templar magic. That's funny. What is it? Oh, it's Kirsten and Ledoux. What? Well, they must have smelt the cooking. What's the matter? Well, I... You see, Simon, I didn't tell you the exact truth. I... I did manage to get the fake pearls. They're here in my bag. I just didn't have time to make the switch. You paid for them. You are perfectly entitled to keep them. I don't understand what all the fuss is about. But if they search the place and find them, they'll know I intended to rob Madame Chen. Oh, Simon, please help me. Oh, I can't see why you're worried. All right. Go and let them in. Hello, Inspector. You're just in time for lunch. I'll get another knife and fork. All right, Templar. I've come for Madame Chen's pearls. Inspector, it makes it sound as if you're accusing us of stealing. That's how it was supposed to sound. I know they're here, and I'm going to find them if I have to turn this place apart brick by brick. I'm sure there's something in the lease that forbids that. But you go ahead if you want to. We do want. And I'm going to start with you. The Duke, go over every inch of the place. Templar, I'll never know for sure. But I'll stake my life that you and this woman stole those pearls. But my hands are tied because I can't prove it. But there is one thing I can do. Order you both out of town. If either of you are within 100 miles of Paris by tomorrow, I'll frame you both for murder. Vindictive. I swear it. Oh, Simon. You were marvelous. Well, that's... Uh sort of gratitude I like. I thought he was bound to find them. No, oh, he uh, did get a little warm. Where, where did you hide them? You remember I was uh, talking about pearls dissolving in wine. 
Madam Chen. You didn't. Oh, it's nothing to worry about. I'm sure it doesn't apply to fake pearls. Oh, you fool. You, you fool. Oh, you fool. You, you fool. Well, that must have been the real ones. Well, as you've uh, ruined a perfectly good meal, there's not much point in staying, is there? Get out! Get out before I kill you! Come in. Hello, Mr. Templer. I thought the girl said you'd checked out. That was for the benefit of the police. She's a very cooperative girl. Can I get you something? Yes, but before you do, there's something I want you to have. The gym pearls. I'm afraid they won't feed or clothe or provide medicine for all the people in your country. But at least they'll help some. Perhaps the very old and the very young. I, I don't... You just take them, will you? All they cost me was a piece of thread with a small clasp on it. And a couple of bottles of rather cheap red wine and a tough old boiling fowl. Now, perhaps you'd like to take my order. Of course, Mr. Templer. A dozen oysters, large ones, with pearls. Mm -hmm. 